um, was that how do you input your calculations uh, for the digester energy heating needed? I believe that was a question for Kurt, if you have an answer for that one. Or I, I'm not, maybe we, I don't know if you need clarification or if that is good enough for you. <clears throat> sure, thank you, um, Becky. I think I can, uh, I can uh, answer sufficiently. Okay. So the question is uh, for the analysis that I um, presented on the greenhouse gas reductions uh, for the boundary conditions, um, how did we include uh, heating for the digester? So um, good question. Uh, the analysis that we did was specifically on the greenhouse gases associated with the electrical energy used on the farm. And so we did include the parasitic electricity used um, to operate the digester in our analysis. So um, when it came time to looking at the, uh, the renewable energy generated by the system, we actually subtracted off of from the total renewable energy generated, the parasitic electrical energy uh, to operate the digester. Um, so we did account for that. We did it not. We did not account for any heating of the digester. Um, it was not part of the boundaries of the analysis. Um, most the reason why we didn't include it, um, other than we didn't, it was not within the boundaries. The reason it's not in the boundary is because um, the uh, heat of combustion from using the biogas to fuel the engine generator set is harvested and then used to heat the digester in, in, in most cases to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so uh, if that heat was not harvested and used uh, in most, all, if not all cases, um, it's just dumped the environment right now or dumped to the ambient. In other words, uh, big radiators uh, are used to, to uh, transfer the heat um, from the engine uh, to the outside. So we're merely just using heat that otherwise would be dumped to the environment. So um, there's no, uh, we're not using any fossil fuel to heat the uh, digester. Um, so for those reasons, it's not included. Um, we could have included uh, in our analysis uh, fossil fuel heat avoided by way of using that extra heat from the engine generators that not needed to operate the digester and used, for example, to operate a greenhouse. Um, but um, that was, we did not include any any heat. Thanks, Kurt. Sure. Uh, I, we had another question <laughs> that says um, that someone would, was asking um, that these, like other renewable systems, are being discouraged <clears throat> from selling energy back to the grid since the new administration wants to become more reliable on coal. Can anyone speak to that? So I don't know if um, you or Nick or anybody has any idea if they've felt as though there's been some uh, additional discouragement or, or maybe anything that's changed recently. Yeah, I can give a Eat Agstar perspective on this. Certainly the new administration has um, made supporting coal a priority, but um, I, I'm not aware of any efforts to discourage uh, biogas or other renewables. Um, so, any other comments? Okay, thanks, Nick. Um, I uh, the next question was uh, from Walter, and he w is interested in about the cooling systems um, from the bio the last biogas presentation. I think that's the absorption chillers. Um, so the absorption chillers are a chilling mechanism that takes um, the that direct burns um, into, I don't know, it's kind of like a chimney and then it goes through like a heat exchanger in a way. Um, and then it uses that to direct cool um, a unit. And in that particular case, uh, we purchased existing units from uh, China. The technology has been around for a long time. They traditionally run on natural gas. So typically, if you want to buy a pre-manufactured system, they have them in all sizes and you can get them around the world. You just have to modify them to be run on biogas. <laughs> um, they have not been very, they've been pretty easy to implement, uh, particularly in Uganda, because we had some history um, with people using um, kerosene coolers. And so the chillers were run in the same way, but they were the heat was produced from kerosene instead of from the biogas. So it's pretty simple. 
Um, the nice thing about it is that the biogas being burned only touches a small part of the chiller itself. Um, so if you have hydrogen sulfide or other corrosive components, um, you, you, your gas quality, I guess I'm saying, is not super important um, and that it's easy to clean um, to figure that out later. All right, um, I'm not seeing a lot of other questions. Um, maybe one thing I'd like to ask of our panelists, of each of you, I know a lot of you talk, touched a little bit on economics. Um, I am curious if you have ideas of how we think we could move to more economically sustainable systems or how you think we might pave a path into getting somewhere that we might be able to encourage more people to um, install digesters. Anybody want to take a stab at that? I, I can start, Becky, if you like. Yeah, that's great, Kurt. Sure. So, um, interesting question, and I would say that um, we've uh, since, we've, since we've been working on uh, digestion for a long time, we've we've kind of learned uh, um, where where we need to be going and uh, where the opportunities are. Uh, at least we've learned some of those, I would say, and. Um, through through our work, we really have kind of concluded that um, our uh, efforts really need to be focused um, not as not as much as helping the farms uh, on their digester projects, which which is fun, and we get to do that um, from time to time. So that's really really cool. But is to uh, make it uh, known to policymakers and others um, uh, in in the state about what these digesters really are doing, what they can do, and how, um, how some of the um, values for, for example, in this case, greenhouse gas reductions can be uh, monetized and then really improve uh, imp improve the situation. So we would end up with more digesters. So we're we're not really uh, very much uh, going down the route of asking for subsidies or anything like that. It's more um, let's develop a a, a business model uh, industry platform that will stand on its own. So I've always uh, believe I've believed for a long time that um, we're not going to be like Germany where they get 30, up to 32 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity or whatever the going rate is at this point in time. Um, or maybe Denmark where um, I like the Denmark model better. Um, I don't remember all the uh, uh, items that were put in place, but the Danish have nine items that they basically put in place that helped move the anaerobic digestion forward to where it is today, which is very impressive. And essentially um, the incentives were targeted uh, Improving things other than energy in this in the country, um, like uh, improving water quality and anything that was done to improve water quality that had a digester component um, that became a uh, a incentive for a firm to take advantage of that. <laughs> so there was nine things like that, which each little thing together ended up in a victory. So I like that model myself. Great, Nick or Mahmoud. Yeah, Kurt, you touched on a, on a lot of good things there. Certainly, um, educating local and state policymakers on all of the the benefits the systems provide um, is certainly um, an effort that AgStar continues to to try to um, move forward with. Um, and I touched a little bit on my uh, presentation as well as diversifying revenue streams, taking advantage of all the benefits that digesters provide. Um, energy. Uh, at this point is not going to be a financial driver for projects. For, so um, trying to find value from the digest date um, is certainly um, an opportunity to help make projects viable. Absolutely. Um, just uh, to chime in, uh, maybe in the first slide in my presentation as well, the, the driver here and certainly in the state of Wisconsin for uh, funding for these projects was clean water and renewable energy in that order. And that sort of indicates how uh, achieving more than one goal using these systems is the only way to have them implemented going forward. Um, so bundling that with nutrient export, for instance, or um, uh, certainly uh, touching on the regulatory landscape, be it with the grid or be it with the uh, funding or cost shares, these are about the only ways to push the technology forward. Great. I appreciate everyone's insight on that. I, uh, I think it'll be a big combination of a number of things. I'm hoping in a few years we could do another webinar and give you some new projections of how well things have come. So 
Uh, I'm hoping everybody out there and those presenters and others continue the great work that they shared with us today.